Hi all. In our today's session, let's discuss about project methodologies or also known as software development life cycle models. We'll see how they are used in real-time software industries. Right? I'm Charlene Nerala. In the agenda plan for today, we'll discuss on why we actually use project methodologies, what are the different SDLC models we have, We'll then discuss the most used models in real-time industry, which are waterfall model and agile methodology in detail. So then we'll see on how to choose which model. Clear? So let's get started. Why we use project methodologies? The general aim of project management methodology is to have a standardized, structured, and organized work methods. So this helps us to have the project running in the right manner. And it allows us to repeat successful aspects and learn from mistakes. thus resulting in a continuous improvement process. Right? So the software development life cycle is a process followed for a software project within a software industry. It consists of a detailed plan describing on how to develop maintain, replace, and alter or enhance specific software, right? The life cycle defines a methodology for improving the quality of software and the overall development process, clear? So these are the different SDLC models we have. So they are waterfall model, iterative model, spiral, V model, big bang, agile, rad, uh, which is also known as rapid application development model and software prototype model. So among all of these, the most used models are waterfall model and agile model in real-time software industry. So you keep hearing about these two in uh, a lot of times, right? So we'll now discuss in detail about these two models. Let's first start with waterfall model. So in the waterfall approach, the uh, process of the software development is divided into different phases. So it illustrates a linear sequential flow, which means the uh, second phase starts only when the first phase gets completed. Clear? So the next phase uh, gets started only if the previous phase gets completed. So that is the waterfall model. So the different phases that are included are the requirement gathering phase, the design phase, development or implementation phase, testing, deployment, and maintenance. So we'll discuss in detail about each one of the phase in our next sessions. But here I'll give you an overview on what we do in each phase and what document we prepare in each phase. Clear? So here we are talking in perspective of integration. So how in integration uh, domain we use, make use of this waterfall model. Clear? So the first is requirement gathering phase. So all the uh, possible requirements of this system to be developed will be captured in this phase. So the architect will go in series of calls with the client and will try to get the complete requirements on what the project should look like and what they are expecting, right? So based on their discussions, the architect will prepare a functional specification document, right? So then this functional specification document that is prepared will be shared with the client and will be asked for sign off. So the client verifies everything and once he's good with it, he'll provide the sign off on functional specification document. So then the next phase, which is the design phase, will get started. So here, the uh, implementation on how the process have to be implemented will be discussed at a high level. So uh, they'll discuss on how the process flow should be, on uh, how the error handling should be implemented, the file logging, the properties to be used. So all these, based on the requirements they gathered, they'll discuss. So uh, this will be developed by the architects, the team leads, uh, the most experienced team, where they have good knowledge on the 
uh, tool or product that we are using as well. So based on the discussions, they develop a high level software design specification. This gives you the implementation flow at a high level on how it have to look like, right? So then starts the development phase. So here, taking the reference of the functional specification document and high level software design specification document, the developers start with the actual implementation. They start with the actual implementation of the processes that have to be developed, right? So along with the development, they also prepare a low level software design specification document. So this consists of uh, the code at detail level on what actually they have implemented, what they have used. So in detail, uh, require, in detail implementation uh, steps will be described here. Okay. So now the complete development is done. All the processes uh, are completed. Then starts the testing phase. So we have different testing phases where we have unit testing, uh, system integration testing known as SIT and user acceptance testing known as UAT. So the first is the unit testing. So the developer who have developed the code will do the unit testing. So which means he tests the functionalities of the code against all the test cases. He sees how the code is behaving in the positive scenarios and the negative scenarios. Make sure that his code is working fine. So then the system integration testing. So here all the integration codes are integrated. So in real time, so not only one person will be developing the processes, right? There'll be a group of people developing the processes. So the come all the processes will be tested end to end on the functionalities. So that is system integration testing. So then comes the user acceptance testing where the client himself will be involved in the testing and does all the important functionalities test. And he sees how the code uh, is behaving in different scenarios and based on which he will provide the sign off, right? So during this phase, the different test case specification documents that are prepared are UTS, which is unit test specification document, system integration testing document, and user acceptance testing document. Clear? So once we are all good with testing and we've got the sign off on UAT, then comes the deployment phase. So here, the actual code is deployed into production and the processes are scheduled to run in real time. Right? So in order to do the deployment, we need to provide a deployment guidelines document. So this will be prepared by the developer. He will tell you like what will be the, uh, say for Boomi, what will be the environment extensions, the values to be provided, how it have to be deployed, which environment, which environment. So in detail deployment guidelines document will be provided by the user. So based on which the one who is going to deploy will take it as reference and will do the deployment, right? So we have now deployed the code in to production. So there can come up issues when the code is executed with real-time data. So they are, they are all fixed, tested, and deployed again. So the phase continues. So the after, say, one or two months, once all the errors are reduced and once the code becomes stable, the team size will be reduced to, uh, say, like one or two will be maintaining and monitoring the processes. So during maintenance, uh, if we see any major issues, we first fix them and we need to prepare a RCA, also known as root cause analysis document or impact analysis document. So the client might ask you for these details on why the error have occurred, what is the issue behind it, what is the impact uh, because of it. So all these details have to be provided. Yeah, this is how a waterfall model looks like. Clear? So you go for waterfall model when uh, you have the requirements very clear. So which means there is no change in the requirements once they are discussed in the requirement gathering phase. 
and once the functional specification document is prepared and move to the next phase there will be no change in the requirement so if you are confident on it then we'll go for waterfall model and when the project is short uh, so the reason is in waterfall model the client will not be able to see uh, on what is happening on how or how the code is being developed till the testing phase he has no visibility so if the project is short the duration would be short and so the client will have visibility on what is happening so then when we need to have a well documented stuff for all the processes the results the testing everything then we go for waterfall model right uh, let's now talk about agile methodology so agile is a software development methodology to build a software incrementally using short iterations uh, like say 1 to 4 weeks of time so that the development process is aligned with the changing business needs so here you'll be able to see different sprints and in each sprint you have different phases like the plan design develop test deploy review and launch so after each sprint you can see a working session of the product right uh, in waterfall model what we have seen so it's a single pass development like which can be estimated for 6 to 18 months where all the requirements and risks are known beforehand but here in agile methodology it follows a frequent feedback where a workable product is delivered after each sprint right uh in integration domain it can be more of like the first would be that they start the pro project with the waterfall model and once it goes into live and after uh, it is stable then they follow the agile methodology to fix the issues that are coming in production right so then what does the agile team include so uh, ideally for a normal project the agile team consists of say 3 uh, to 4 developers one tester one technical lead one product owner and one scrum master so to talk about the product owner or project owner he is the one who drives the uh, project from business perspective his responsibilities include Uh, to define the requirements and to prioritize their values and to determine the release date and contents and uh, also to ensure that team is working on the most valued requirements right so then comes the scrum master so this scrum master is more of like a team leader uh, who facilitates or helps the team members to follow agile practices so that they can meet their commitments and his responsibilities include to uh, conduct scrum meetings uh, to assign the stories to the developers um, to resolve any kind of blockers that the team is facing and also to ensure that the agile inspect and adapt processes are followed properly which includes uh, like say daily stand up meetings the planned meetings demos reviews and everything else right so then we have the technically developers testers who works on the user stories um and so the basic uh, terms or terminologies that are included in agile methodology are uh, the first sprint so as we've discussed an agile team works in iterations to deliver user stories where each iteration is of say one week to uh, four weeks of time and this is called a sprint right then user story a user story is a requirement which defines what is required by the user so user stories will be created by the project owner based on the requirement that he gets and will put them into the backlog and points uh, so a point defines how much time the developer takes to work on the user story to complete it so ideally one point refers to 8 hours so based on the uh, complexity of the user story uh, the time taken the points will be assigned to that user story and capacity so the capacity defines how much an individual can commit against the uh, estimated hours okay 
so then uh, the different meetings that uh, will be handled are like say backlog grooming session so where as i've said like project owner uh, will create the requirements or user stories in the backlog and in the backlog grooming session the back the user stories from the backlog will be prioritized to work in that particular sprint then sprint planning so all those that are planned for that sprint will be distributed across the uh, team based on their uh, capacity then sprint closure so as we discussed like say we have one to four week sprint say we have two week sprint here so after every two weeks we'll have a sprint closure meeting so in this meeting the team should give the updates of the user stories that are assigned for that sprint and if they are completed they have to be closed in that sprint if they are not completed they will be moved to the next sprint and the team performance will be evaluated based on the number of points they are doing for that particular sprint right and we have daily stand up meetings to uh, give the updates and to discuss of any blocks that the team is facing so this is a brief about agile methodology then you go for agile methodology when the requirements are not very clear when the client keeps on changing the requirements uh use for time critical applications where the client can see a working demo after each sprint and he can understand like what are if any changes are required or if the product outcome looks good so far and uh constant collaboration with stakeholders and improvement at every stage so the client uh, should be there for the review meetings and all to make sure that the project is going well right so that's about the most used project methodologies the waterfall model and the agile methodology that we have discussed that's all for today's session thank you